Hi Year 4, I hope you're all having a lovely week. Um, this week we have Chapter 3 of The Jungle Challenge, which is called Lost in the Woods, and I'm going to read it for you now. <clears throat> Overall time. The leader checked her board and shook her head. Sorry, 22 seconds off the camp record, I'm afraid. It was like being socked in the stomach. No record, no special prize. Well, at least it, his team had won, thanks to Sophie. Omar thought he, he should congratulate her. So he went over to her and told her well done, but he couldn't resist grumbling about the missed record. Oh well, Sophie said carelessly. We did our best and we won the race. Omar glared at her. She didn't get it. Not the point, he muttered, and he walked away. Nice one, Omar, shouted a cheerful voice. Ollie and Jack were hurrying over. Yellow's won, right? Jack said. That's cool. Omar couldn't stand looking at their cheerful, happy, happy faces. No one got it. What's the point in trying so hard if you, if you didn't get the record? Kind of, he said through his teeth. I, uh, I just remembered something I have to do. Uh, over here. Omar hurried away quickly before they could ask what that something was. He just wanted to be on his own. When he thought about the last 20 minutes, he felt his toes curl with embarrassment. Deep down, Omar knew he hadn't been nice. He had shouted at Sophie in the race, and then he had been rude to her afterwards, and then he had brushed his friends off. But none of them understood what it was like. Like a drink, Omar? said a voice behind him. He turned in surprise. He hadn't noticed anyone following him. But Sophie was offering him a juice carton. He took it. Thanks. He still felt bad about his temper. You know, she said carefully, you took that race pretty seriously, didn't you? It was like she had pressed a button inside of him. A button marked temper. Omar felt tears of frustration and shame pricking his eyes. Words just came spilling out of him. I'd just like to win. Is that so bad? So why am I always surrounded by slow coaches? He started to walk away before he said something really unkind. Hey, Omar, she called gently. When he looked back, Sophie was holding something out. I just want to give you this. He took it out of curiosity. Just consider it a gift, she added. It was a compass. It obviously meant something to her. If there was one thing Omar knew he didn't deserve, it was a gift. And he didn't need a compass. But he didn't want to be even ruder than he had been, so he put it in his pocket. Thanks. She smiled and went back to her friends. Omar still didn't still couldn't face the thought of mixing with the other people, so he headed off on his own. He really didn't notice which way he was going. If he heard people one way, he went the other. Strange feelings churned inside of him, and he just wanted to cry. He was really embarrassed by his behaviour. He started to feel warm all over. Really warm. A line of sweat trickled out of his hair and he wiped it away while he thought. Omar liked camp. He liked the other kids and all the act activities, but winning was just so important to him. Coming first. After all, the opposite of winning was losing, and he didn't want to be a loser. Who did? Sure, Omar knew other people said that, that doing your best and being kind was more important, like Sophie, who didn't seem to care too much about the special prize. But how could she think like that? The frustration boiled up in him. Ah! Omar swung his fist sideways into the nearest tree. His hand thudded into the rough bark and his shout changed into a loud, Ow! Trees were tougher than they looked. Omar studied his hand and drew in his breath with a sharp hiss. He had cut a gash at the base of his little finger and blood was oozing out. It really stung. He felt a bit dizzy and hot all over. His hair was damp with sweat. Smart move, Omar, he muttered. Now you can win a special prize for a kid at camp who hurt himself in the stupidest way. Omar had thought Sophie was pretty dumb when she fell off the zip wire. This was about a hundred times dumber. He needed to get an adult to look at it, so he climbed to his feet. That was when he realised he had no idea 
which way to go. The bushes were thick in every direction and he was surprised at how dark it seemed and it was really hot. Why was it so hot all of a sudden? Omar tried to listen for sounds of camp. Shouts and laughing, people generally having fun. Nothing. There was a lot of strange bird song, all whoops and whistles. So which way should he go? He might set a record after all, a whole new record for kid who managed to get lost at camp, he thought. I could do without winning that one, thanks. Then he remembered he did have something that could help. He had a compass. Thanks, Sophie, Omar said, and he pulled the compass out of his pocket. But he couldn't remember the layout of camp. Did he want to go north, south, east or west? Omar looked at the compass. The dial was turning fast round and round, and somehow there were five directions on it. So the, comp the compass was basically useless. Not much of a gift at all. Omar rolled his eyes and stuffed it back into his pocket. He needed to get going and not worry about the stupid compass. He picked a direction at random and started to walk fast. Big mistake. He seemed to have picked a path through the thickest bushes there were. The leaves and branches closed around Omar. The further in he pushed, the harder it, it got to keep going. The damp air was like a thick blanket wrapped around him. Sweat streamed down his face. He shook his head to get the droplets out of his eyes. The salt in his sweat made the cut in his hand sting. Leaves scraped against his face and scratched the bare skin on his arms and legs. This is crazy! Omar hur hurled himself towards the bushes. A forked branch almost jabbed him in the eye. Then a voice shouted right behind him, Hey, stop right there. Don't move a muscle. It was a man's voice and it was filled with urgency and purpose. Omar did what he was told. He paused exactly where he was with one foot lifted up. Stay very still, said the man. Look about a metre ahead of your left foot. Omar glanced down and got a huge shock. The head of a very large, very vicious looking snake poked out of the leaves. Its scales were shiny and bright green. Its tongue flicked in and out and its yellow slitted eyes were fixed on him. Ooh, okay. So that is the end of chapter three. And you will need to listen to that in order to do the activity which we have set for tomorrow. So I hope you enjoy that. And have a wonderful rest of your week. Okay, thank you.